afterwards USR, as uh, the, the Soviet Union collapsed. In 1991, the, in, uh, the Soviet Union or Russia invaded Czechia, um, who, which wanted to be independent from, from uh, Soviet Union, like, like Poland and others. Then they invaded, uh, Sub uh, Russia invaded Georgia. In, in, 19, in 2014, they uh, captured uh, the Crimean uh, Peninsula. And uh, you, you may want to remember that the, the Russians had, uh, had an agreement with, with Ukraine and basically rented um, uh, the, the harbor for, um, for their ships, et cetera, et cetera. So, and now in, 19, uh, in 2020, second uh, to they invaded Ukraine. Why? Because um, of a ra large uh, Russian-speaking population, they, uh, they th thought was discriminated against. And um, uh, then the, the other thing is to, to de-dasify uh, Ukraine. Um, and now it's basically territorial ambitions. When you think of it, these are the, all the aims that I see Russian uh, pursuing, and uh, now with threatening nuclear attacks, et cetera, et cetera, are the aims of, of, of fascism. Nazi Germany did precisely that in 1939. Except in, in the case of, uh, of Russia, they, they do it in the name of fighting Nazis, which is, is just, basically non-existing, or I wouldn't say non-existing. There are no doubts, just like in the United States, there, there are rights, rightist groups. There are in Ukrainian, no doubt, there are some uh, rightist uh, units, et cetera, et cetera. But it, it, to me, it replicates basically, the Russian replicates the fascist technology fighting against fascists, but actually fighting a world that has overcome fascism. Europe is not a fascist country. Europe is, 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 a, is a multicultural uh, uh, group where, where people study in different cultures, learn different languages. It's so that they have overcome basically the results of, of fascism. And now uh, they become increasingly united as just like uh, as uh, in Germany in uh, after the uh, French uh, uh, French uh, Prussian War uh, with with Finland trying to join NATO and, and Sweden etc cetera, etc cetera. Poland I mean nobody mentioned that Poland was invited invaded Bulgaria was invaded so that is perfectly understandable that they seek some protection. So I think this this is um, to me it is just an um, if you want an old-fashioned uh, strategy uh, fighting a, a modern kind of uh, social organization that, such as a, a, a relatively uh, free of prejudices uh, your uh, Europe and and I feel very sad that this is uh, this this is really misunderstood and. and I mean, the Europeans don't want any war. They, they, it, it, as I said, the, the German um, Germany had reduced the military budget to its absolute minimum, and now they had to increase it. So it's 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 just uh, it's a sad phenomenon. And I, I think one should be careful not not to make some kind of abstractions like the state, the interest of the state. This is always the interest of the leader of the state. And as I said, in First World War, they were fighting for their kings. Second World War, they're fighting for their ideology. And th this current situation is a mixture of both. Stuart, if, after strategy, okay. Jamie. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Klaus. That was very interesting. The, one of the things that I, uh, thoughts that I have while you were speaking is that if you want to have peace uh, between, uh, Ukraine and Russia, you need to have more student exchanges. You need to have more business interaction. You need to let the uh, exactly, uh, uh, and and that's the exact opposite of what we're doing with the sanctions. Well, but but, well, but think can about I interfere it. with you? What you said all from the 
very beginning to the very end, one can read in uh, investor newspapers. All this information, nothing, not a one inch of new information. All this is known. He, he, let me inject information which you don't want to listen, which is first. You know, the Ukrainians were always, always very anti Semitic. That is le legendary anti Semitic, okay? Now, two and a half million Jews left Ukraine because of this, okay? You, be, be, before even the Soviet Union disintegrated, okay? Nobody wants to pay attention to this fact. Now, all this anti Semitism, you think it's uh, you, because, because Zelensky is Jew that, 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 uh, that, uh, that they left all this, they became all fluffy and white and good? Absolutely no. Okay, that is first. A second, you said about invasion of uh, Czech Republic, <laughs> Hungary, etc., etc. I agree with you 100% on that. That is absolutely correct. What is not correct, however, is the fact that, and I was working in Germany for five years, and I was exactly present at that time when Russia was withdrawing its troops from Germany all the way back home. And it was agreed upon that, okay, you, you guys are not gonna move with NATO to the, to the east, and we are going to remove all our troops from all the Eastern block. Okay, which had happened, but then, but then, of course, uh, West uh, seized the opportunity and went all the way to to Russia. And and Putin was saying exactly in his statement before invasion exactly this that I was uh, that I Putin was telling West don't do this, don't do this, don't do this for twenty years, and nobody was wanted to listen to this. <laughs> Now, you see, and, and the last thing is that they, in October, November of last year, they made an offer, I mean, kind of, that why not NATO would move westward for 1,000 miles and everything would be fine. Should it happen, there would be no war, no war between Russia and Ukraine. Just make sure there would be no war. This westward move, as militarily means nothing because all this rocketry could reach Russia anyway. So it's just a goodwill gesture. West doesn't want, didn't want to do that. Absolutely no. And as a result, this happened. So be fair. If if you're telling this uh, story of mass media, which we all know, then pay attention to this as well. Jamie. Let me let me yeah, ask me. Uh, first. I respond to uh, to Stu. Yes, in, in exchange of students would be great. Well, that is the, as I said, that was the beginning of after the for a Second World War, French-German collaboration. When when I grew up as a kid, I was told French is the uh, France is the arch enemy of Germany. Well, that was the ideological position under which people were fighting. But afterwards, it completely disappeared by interchanging. Now, Germany, for example, tried to do this with Russia, like the the, uh, the oil uh, pipeline. That was also an effort to make connections, but it it failed. It failed to do anything. And uh, for Germany, the division we, we had uh, four zones in Germany: French, British, and uh, and French and American. But the Russians made a borderline and one could not cross. I mean, that this, this is, there are different kinds of attitudes that, that prevented the collaboration. And the collaboration was, was there on the part of, you know, I don't know, call it the, the West, but at least uh, there was much more collaboration of that. Say, the, I would simply say that the European has advanced politically and Russia is still, uh, you know, 1930s fascism. <laughs> The strategies. Jamie. All right. So, uh, Arkady, I have very good news for you in, in that way that there is actually a lot of people in the West who, who tell a story that's very similar to, to your story. Does you point out the charade of Zelensky calling himself a Jew and, and actually that, that doesn't mean anything to Absolutely say that. Nothing. And, 
and and there is an organization and it has been discussed on our mailing list it's called world beyond war and uh they're just trying to think very pragmatically just about the military industrial complex and all those people that have a job that's somehow connected to the military <laughs> and and take that as a starting point to to try to change the dialogue pragmatically but, but what i hear in klaus is that academically we're still stuck and i think it's you klaus also to come up with the universal explanation and to think that it's all about an explanation and then the problem is solved well we need to actually think pragmatically about problem solving and not try to explain so what Stuart is saying about the students is like totally what we need to do because it's the future generation that we need to 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 spread our message like we're all retired like who is going to listen to us we need this younger generation and we don't we don't need the ones down the street we need the ones at the other side of the world uh, i mean and to connect us all so but, but it requires us to think as problem solvers and and i think there is a subtle difference because an explanation can actually create problems uh, some explanations at least and if we well, think from the angle everybody has a right to speak and if yeah. you shut off for example what putin was said completely was cut off from the western media okay yeah. only one sentence that is not fair yeah and and so those things are being discussed but it's not in the mainstream media it's like um it's on the ground so to say and, exactly and and it is um it's difficult because no one sees it or at least some people see it but but it looks as if nothing is happening but but there is a group of people that are, are trying to to walk your narrative arcadi and and also if i may get back to the question of metaphors and i just want to share this screen for one minute because it, it, it really i think it's important this is a thought structure in the west and actually it's coming from england uh, in the middle ages the great chain of being and that is really the oedipus complex like the baby who thinks of itself at the bottom and then God the Father is at the top. And so the baby wants to become God the Father. And so we need to get, we need to overcome that, that symbol, but it's in the literature everywhere. And until we say our literature is conditioning us to, to into the submissive paternalistic thinking, we're never going to change because we're bombarded with all these messages, like including communism, that there is a class structure. So first it assumes there is the, the chain and then it says the chain will mystically disappear, but it doesn't really explain how it disappears. So, so we need to think about our, 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 um, our culture, how the culture creates our, our prison and, and how we, we, we don't need a grand explanation. We need to look at how we grow up and become adults and how we become emancipated, so to say, um, from being an adolescent or a child to, to being an, an, a person that is responsible for his own actions. Okay, thank you. I like, I, like to, I like to say that I fully agree with you. That's the reason why actually I was talking also about what ordinary people fight for. Now, when they are subject to a king, they do a king the favor and fight for their their relationship to other uh, nobilities. When when they are involved in 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 the, in the uh, Nazism and uh, all kinds of ideologies, they fight for an ideology. But I think in Europe, you fight for a way of life to be able to free to travel at, and and you know, experience other alternatives, other cultures and be connected that is a different kind of way of fighting for or fighting for or being and and i think i think you're right that i think one should look at the metaphors of what what people are subsuming themselves under under what kind of leadership jerry yeah uh i would uh, say that perhaps there is a uh, 
a way to, to reconcile some of these ideas. Uh, it's not, and it's really not the question of fairness and it's not the question of listening to others. Uh, it's not the question of spreading more propaganda. Uh, really underlying most of what has been said today from with the exception of, uh, well, even, even uh, uh, Professor uh, Kaufman's remarks is the concept of fear and personal fear becomes political fear. And the history of mankind is <laughs> richly illustrated with the possibilities of fear and the way it happens. And I would never have accepted or promoted this, uh, say even 20 years ago, but certainly in the last 10 years, and particularly under the Trump administration, I have seen perfectly normal rational, intelligent, well-educated people become fearful. Uh, and it has an enormous impact on what's going on in the United States. It's not a question of truth or value or ethics or whatever. It's, it's us against them. We fear them because. And uh, I would just leave it at that. It seems to underlie Mr. Putin's concerns with the security of, of Russia. Uh, it certainly uh, is what's going on in the United States uh, in the last five years, uh, certainly is Mr. Trump's effort to generate as much fear among his political opponents as he possibly can. And uh, I, I stopped there. I'd like to say, I fully agree with that, the issue of fear. And when you think of uh, Russia again, there was not a single shot that I know of that NATO fired in the direction of Russia. It was a strictly defensive agreement and it, it, it creates, it invites a lot of other people, but not in order to capture territory from, from Russia. That is the other way around. Russia has been uh, systematically trying to get more territory to, and more influence, various kinds of countries. And that, that's a different kind of thing, and that creates no doubt fear. That's not a narrative which Russia conveys to us. The narrative of Russia is as follows, that once they withdrew troops from Eastern Bloc uh, back to Russia, okay, there was agreement not written and sealed, but spoken agreement that there will be no movement of NATO to, uh, toward Russian borders. But yet it was, and that's what makes Russia mad. Now, if you now move this again back, this, this border back a thousand miles, it, militarily it means nothing really. It's just a symbolic gesture of the West. But West is absolutely adamantly doesn't want to do that. And from that, war with Ukraine started. Well, you can't really blame someone who is in. I cannot blame. I'm just but, stating as a scientist. Yeah, but then you okay. can't blame, blame, for example, uh, Poland and Bulgaria, etc., uh, okay. to 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 uh, defend themselves as in, as a country. We we or have as being part of Europe. <laughs> well, we it have... seems to me, it seems to me that the, this argument about NATO is exactly uh, a reflection of the two different systems of thought from the western point of view we keep saying well it's not an aggressive um it's not an aggressive thing nato and from the other point of view it looks aggressive no matter what that's the fear that motivates what then why it is so difficult for the west to move thousand miles i mean completely agreeing with you that NATO was a war organization created for the purpose That's of attacking. That's not telling me, to me. You will tell this to Klaus. I don't yeah, care. No, I just yeah. say the fact. Yeah. So, so NATO should have reorganized itself into a different organization with a different charter. But it will never do that. It will never do that. Keep in mind. Okay. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Pavel, uh, Stuart, uh, Lou, do you have your concluding remarks? Okay. I have no concluding remarks. I'd like to hear what Pavel has to say. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. 
to talk before you to share what I found interesting. Uh, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, these arguments, even in this small uh, group of people, about 10, and uh, almost all of them are of Western background, they show that they so different views. Uh, uh, what I tr try to do, just to uh, show why Mr. Putin uh, told in his speech what Mr. Holodenko mentioned, uh, a little bit more. <clears throat> in, December, uh, in December last year, Russia published draft agreements with NATO and the US mentioning this particular position, move NATO boundary backwards. Uh, uh, state as a gesture clearly. of goodwill, as a gesture of goodwill yeah, only, yeah. because military it means nothing really. Yeah, then uh, uh, make a clear statement that Ukraine will never be a member of NATO. And some other points. It was completely uh, not even rejected. It was not even discussed by uh, the NATO officials and the AS. They just mentioned that we don't want to discuss it. Uh, that was the beginning of this short and very bad way to this particular war conflict. I, I quite agree with Mr. Haladenko about this. Again, the Russians are still thinking in, in the terms of empire. They're not trying to conquer somebody else's territory. They're trying to get back whatever was Soviet Union or Russian empire. So in this sense, it's still very strong stereotype. I would, don't want to say that everybody <coughs> support this idea, but a lot of supporters within Russia. But this, um, is, this is 200 years backward, okay, this is mentality. Yeah. I, I am not supportive of this mentality, okay? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's absolutely not. I understand it very much like I understand NATO position, but I am not supportive of it. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the best, best way out, to my opinion, is to, to start talking again, like Gorbachev started. Like it was started at that time. You, I, I have to insert one more thing. You know, Putin repeatedly was telling us that they have, uh, in, they now have this super, uh, supersonic, super uh, hypersonic weapons, which West doesn't have. And this was the part why they also started this war, incidentally. Should they not have this hypersonic weapon or should they don't boost that they have it? They would not start this war. You know, they, they were thinking that West will pay attention to the fact that they do, do have it. And American uh, minister of defense said that it is not a game changer, okay? And they have, have used this thing once or twice on the battlefield now, and it did not seemingly as, as expected. It didn't uh, produce <clears throat> any effect on on United States. We don't know whether it produced effect in Pentagon, but you know, mass media is saying that no effect. Well, maybe another point, if Putin was properly informed, he will gain no support inside the Ukraine from Russian speaking population after the invasion. Maybe this war also wouldn't happen. That I would re respectfully disagree with you because it was not the purpose of Putin in the first place to recapture Ukraine. Yeah, that true. is absolutely wrong. What about the, the Crim <laughs> What about the Crimean not, Peninsula? It was not true. Putin's Crimean interest. Peninsula was acquired by uh, Catherine the Great in in 18th century, okay, sure. and, and it sure. was her acquisition to Russia, and and sure. all the Russian oligarchy 
and a Russian Tsar was living there on, on this peninsula, incidentally, in the summer palaces. Okay, so this was for centuries Russian, for sure. It's not about if and but. <laughs> well, you can't get turn back history. I mean, at some point, Poland oh, was, yes. uh, I, I was uh, there an empire palaces. that went all the way I to was in this, uh, I was in these palaces in Crimea, and this is not, not still, I was under illusion that uh, that was not the palaces of the Tsar. Sure. Do you want to say something? Lou? I have very little to say, except that you'll notice that uh, when it becomes a, a debate and an argument, it does seem to oscillate into zeros and ones, extremes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Let, let me uh, invite all of you uh, to write me something uh, that I will make an effort to try to put together a report. A club of Remy report submit to both the White House and uh, the Kremlin. Uh, and uh, Stuart and Lou and they don't uh, have brains Paolo, you, you already had Kremlin one chapter. More White House. What? No brains there. Whatever. Whatever. Let's produce something collectively and, and uh, see what we can agree with uh, as the minimum set of our intelligence. Uh, I mean, our insights. How about that? Slava, no. uh, Arkady, uh, Klaus, Bill, you haven't said anything yet. Jamie. Uh, you want to send me a paragraph or so, a page, something like, like your opinion on this? And uh, uh, only, only a short uh, remark. Uh, until uh, 2040, uh, Russia had no uh, territorial claims against uh, Ukraine. Uh, but uh, the coup d'etat uh, made Ukraine a completely different uh, state uh, hostile to uh, Russia. Uh, this is uh, uh, one uh, uh, part of the problem. He, 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 here I have to add to what Slava said, because the problem with this coup d'etat, which you don't want to acknowledge perhaps, is that that uh, Russia, it was Russia who installed Yanukovych as a president of Ukraine. Yanukovych, who had two criminal records, you know, he was twice in jail. Among all the population, they couldn't find anybody except one person with two criminal records. Now, now Ukrainians having, uh, having uh, their Bandera and Shukhevich as a main heroes, Th these were uh, collaborators with Hitler. And among, through all Ukrainian history, there were no other people worthy of being on the banner of, of Ukraine? O only Bandera and Shukhevich? Okay. Arkady, Stu asks a question. Did you see it in the chat line? Do you know if there's an English copy of the speech? No, I don't. I don't, I don't. What was the question? I'm sorry. Putin's speech that you mentioned. Is yeah, there a translation of it? Unfortunately, no, but I can is find it. Is that the Wadeo speech? Wadeo in 21, uh, 2021 in October. I have this I have this speech because I have a student who is happened to be now in Pentagon working for the defense, for the security of the United States. And in, in the Pentagon, they are not familiar with this speech. I just was horrified by this. No, nobody there translated for them the speech of Putin. What is going on in this country? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, we, I'm also worried about what is going on in this country. But I was talking really about Europe myself. And that is a different story. The, at this point, the United States does not want to have a third world war and does not want to get uh, uh, you know, increase this, the, the fighting. But Europe is really increasingly united and is increasingly hurt. And um, whatever uh, happened in Ukraine, it, it, it is actually hurting Europe. 
Ukraine will never be part of Europe, not because Russia not, is not willing it to become part, because it is 200 years behind mentally from Europe, from the rest of Europe. Look at what they produce through generations. Nothing really, zero. So okay. in, in regards to the report that Jason uh, would like to submit somewhere, so I, I'm a little torn that you presented as a report to the US and to the Kremlin because I think we really need to reach um, ordinary people. I mean, for lack of a better word, because it's not the yes, rulers, yes, yes, it's yes. the soldiers, the soldiers who, who naively go along with the narrative. They, they, once they stop fighting, I mean, stop carrying out the orders, then things will change. So, so, and and also, Jason, if I may uh, connect with the previous presentation of what you you said, it's about the storytelling. Mm -hmm. Just to to d d present the report in the form of a story, but we we need a story that that stops using the binary of good and evil. That is, I yeah. think, what is too really abstract. Important. Yeah, no, it's too <laughs> simplistic. Well, it's simplistic. not abstract at all. Yeah, but it's both abstract and simplistic. <laughs> Lou, you want to defend that? <laughs> oh, but we're not talking about uh, we're not talking about the value of the model. Um, it's obvious that it's a highly abstract model, but nevertheless, people do. Um, have points of view that are extreme, and those points of view uh, it, are related to their actions. So, so the extremes and how the extremes are being handled is really important, even though we understand that a model based strictly on extremes uh, is going to be ignoring a lot. No, uh, Lou, I think the problem is that people think of it as a representational model as opposed to an organizing device. So it gets back to what, the, what is constructivism. Well, yes. It's we need to let uh, go yes. of the representational thinking as uh, the yes. absolute truth. And, and that, that, that's, that's, another, that's another reason why I suggest looking at it not as Boolean algebra, but looking at it from the point of view of of the making of distinctions yeah. uh, and then you are in a constructive mode or in an injunctive mode you are looking at your own actions in the language and your own actions in relation to how you model mm -hmm. okay the, please the send question me is something. the question is what is your own language is it the leader is it the soldier is it the ordinary citizen? Oh, exactly. Is it the exactly. One who, who if I say, uh, yeah, Klaus, I mean, if I say my own language, you're going to immediately ask me to explain uh, 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 no, no, where I, I am, who I am. I said, you have to <laughs> yeah. be specific. Sure. Okay. I mean, I see, for example, in, in even in Russia, from little I get, the younger generation is not the same as the one that is now making the decision and there, there is i think hope my opinion some hope that there will be some changes and that is true also even in the united states if you go to the senate these are all old fatty daddies that make decisions on on women's uh, abortion rights etc etc it it has to change and the younger generation thinks differently and i think that is why i think what happened in europe the united europe but as i said you know when i was i was a young student in Germany, we traveled everywhere, we hitchhiked everywhere, and the whole, everything was open to us. And the interesting thing is that I think German, East Germany collapsed because the East Germans couldn't travel. And when they couldn't travel, they, 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 the wall collapsed. So that's a uh, different attitude. I would like Practice. to support uh, um, this idea. Uh, all the people who are in the governmental offices in Moscow, uh, they are approximately of my age. So about around 60 or more. Definitely a new generation should come. Then it will become different. It's very important. 
Okay, so our report will not only direct to White House and the uh, Kremlin, we also direct to the youngest generation of our land.